All right, now this is how I ink the centrals. And, and uh, when I do that, I start with the just basic panel that I drew yesterday, but I've taken the, uh, the, the, the template skin around the borders and the logo off uh, when I transferred it over into a, into a JPEG to work on. Um, doing so allows me to then go in and place that over the image by going into the PDF that I've got, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, Photoshop that I've got with that in there, selecting all, copying that, and then going to the image and pasting it on top. Because I'm working off of the same proportioned images on each side, everything lines up properly and it's perfectly set. Now this gives me the, the framework, the pencil, and then I've got to add two more frames to this to get everything ready because it's going to go straight from here to coloring and to lettering. So the next thing I'm going to do is add two different layers to this. The first one, I'm going to pick a white background and do a fill because that's going to be the color layer that I put down on the bottom. I'm going to leave this layer just exactly as it is. I'm not going to do anything to it because that's the layer I'm going to actually ink on. But then I'm going to go into the pencil layer and I'm going to change the transparency to 30%. So it's working off of a lighter value. From here, it's just a matter of going in and drawing the ink on top of the picture. So I want to make sure that here I've got uh, the black color selected. And I'm going to go into the tool and make sure that I've got my pen selected. I use a G pen when I'm inking because I like the, the flow of the line. It gives you that nice, crisp skinny line to fat line to skinny line. Uh, and in here, I'm doing it the same specific way that I did the, the penciling, where I, I like going from 130-ish, getting the whole panel in, and then just working off of that. Uh, from here, the thing I like to start with is to make sure that I've got the, the straight lines done. And because I'm working on two separate layers where the, the guides are in the background, and the inking is on another panel. I don't have to worry about it if I go over because then I can just come in here and erase the whole thing. And it doesn't affect the drawing in any way, shape, or form. Or it doesn't affect the, the borders. Because trust me, these borders are a pain in the butt to redo. Uh, so get all that done. And I'm not really worried if it doesn't line up exactly at this point because I can go in and fix it at the end. And I'm just going to make sure that we get all of the lines knocked out. And again, here is the spot where it gets a little tricky because I'm going over the character's head while I'm doing this. I know where the character's head is going to be, so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to pre-block out the spots where it's going to cross over. So now, character is placed before that image and everything's happy. Uh, come in here and do the the sofa and because I drew it intentionally bad, well not intentionally, but I drew it bad the first time out. This time I'm trying to fix some of that. There we go. Now time for the pen. We come in here and we just do our little lines. I didn't like that one. Control Z is your friend here and this is one of the reasons why I really embrace digital working from analog because it gives you the ability to go in and immediately erase a mistake. If I'd done this with traditional pen and ink, that would have been something I would have had to get stuck with. So I like that, that I can get in there and just control Z and, and screw up out of there and I'm not really uh, married to it. Gives me a lot more freedom to get in there and experiment and do stuff. Uh, when I'm doing the characters close up, I like to get a little bit bigger because the pen, because I'm working off of a tablet that doesn't actually draw on the image. I like to get in there and get it as big as possible so I make sure that I'm limiting the possible errors that I can make in my drawing. And one of the biggest problems that I've got in this stage and it haunts me every time I get in here and do this 
is that I leave gaps in the inking that I'm doing. And that comes into play when I'm doing the coloring because the coloring fill tool, this little guy right here, doesn't like gaps. He sees a gap and he just immediately colors everything outside of that area. So I've got to make a very concerted effort to fill in my gaps when I'm doing inking of this nature. Or Clip Studio will make me pay. There we go. And right here's Doc's face. And we'll get the collar from the shirt. We'll come back a little bit on this because I like to have a little bit more of the image in there when I'm working on the full body. See, that is a prime example of one of those gaps that I need on. Fill tool on that will not be a very happy person. When you're working inside areas that are going to be the same color, you can leave gaps. But when you're dealing with something that's going to be coming in contact with a colored area from a different color, you don't want gaps. They just cause pain and anguish that you can avoid. I fill that gap. Get the point. Shoulder. Shirt. Pants. And that is the dock. Now I need to get chair. This is the most time consuming process in front of the whole thing. Uh, on a whole, I can do this whole process in about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes per strip. And when I'm doing seven strips a week, you can get an idea how long this takes. I remember them drawing the legs in some semblance of 3D. So I'm going to be pretty clear about what I'm doing with them. There we go. And when I'm doing background stuff like this, I don't like to get technically detailed and go into a lot of effort to make everything look exact because this is the most insignificant portion of the drawing. I'm just putting this in here because I like to start the Monday strip off with at least some semblance of decent quality. I know that by the time I get to doing Sunday strip, that's going to completely vanish. And I'm just going to be slapping ink, digital ink down on a digital surface. But at this stage, I like to at least fake it make it look like I care. I do care. Just not that much. All right, we go. All right, so that's a chart. Now, let's pull that back to 130. Get my straight lines in. Get this blocked out. You can use the line tool to extend the frame back if you got to. I don't recommend doing it because especially Clip Studio Sometimes when you're trying to do that, it'll stop and you'll end up actually drawing the line. So when you're down here wiggling and wiggling, you'll get stuck actually drawing the line down there because for some reason it will interpret your wiggling or your indecision as decision and draw the line for you. So use it if you have to, but don't rely on it. That's my advice. So I don't like that end right there. So let's go ahead and get this guy drawn first. And then get this guy drawn last. Carry it over. And get my straight line. And then we'll go in and like four. We'll eliminate portions of that line and pop that. It's a lot easier to eliminate them now than when you've already drawn the figure in and you're trying to get in there and scrape them out from individual sections. It's a pain in the ass at that point. So the head curve here is probably 
the most difficult thing. I like turning the candle around just a little bit to get the natural curve of my hand going in play. It makes it a little bit easier to get that smooth, natural flow when you're going in a direction that the fingers naturally bend. One of the weird parts about the G-Pen is it throws these little artifacts in sometimes at the end of the line. Uh, I haven't figured out how to quite control that yet. I'm pretty sure if anybody else is a little bit more adept at Clip Studio and knows how to get that, then they will let me know the trick to that. But for now, I just get in there and clean them out manually. It's not exactly an elegant process, but it's effective. These glasses drawing now because here the doc has got a kind of a quizzical look on his face. We'll go one eyebrow up. I'm gonna leave the other one absent to get the impression that he's just got that one eye coming up right here. I like to start the jawline and meet at the chin. That way I get that little guy there that I can clean out. Let's see here are those artifacts again. And there's another gap. Those gaps will kill you, especially when you're trying to do glasses. So get that. Not so much worried about the line for the ear strap on these. Get the wrinkle for the nose. Get the neck. Throw some collar down there. And this and bang there it is now i didn't really draw the logo very good on his hat so let's go ahead and oh, that's what I'm doing. okay when i get in a situation where i'm not sure if i did a good job on that i'll come in here and i'll just draw it again in pencil i'll probably get it right so i want it to be curved here, bang, bang. That's the center of the hat. That's the top, that's the side, that's the center. Okay, now I can come back, hit the X button to switch between colors, and then draw my logo. And now it is about as centered and appropriate as I can get it. Again, it's just a simple two triangles with the Z and the O's. Put this in. I used to come in and do like curves at the O's, but then I realized this is just a much more simple process. So I go with it. Now, I love using the fill tool to block out my blacks, but you got to get rid of the pencil line before you do something like that, otherwise, it's going to get a mess. Now, let's get the Pencil of the chair filled in. I want to make sure you avoid tangents at this point because when you're doing background stuff, that's a real prime opportunity for those tangents to slip in. So, like right here, that's a tangent that I don't want. And that's that chair back riding right alongside the floor. So we'll get in here and where I had that going and just continue it through so that it doesn't tangent out. There you go. Tangents are horrible. I don't like them. I see artists doing them all the time because they just don't realize what it is and then wonder why everybody gets confused when they look at the drawings. So don't do tangents, kids. They're not fun and they're not clever. I like to check with the pencils off to see if I've got any of those artifacts too, because see, right here, got three of those little bad guys. Uh, that little knock, and it creates a tangent there. I really can't get away with that. But here's the part where that's going to be okay because the coloring on this is going to separate 
this area from this area pretty effectively. So I think I'm good. Uh, I use a different pen when I'm doing the signature. It's the marker pen. And the reason I use that is because it's a static line that stays the same thickness the whole way through. So if I go in here with a, with a marker pen, for instance, and try and do the signature, I get that nice little wave. And it looks cool on the W, but then when I start to do the downward strokes, eh, well, I don't, I'm not a big fan. However, I accidentally undid one. Uh, but if I come in with the with the marker and do that, see the line is more or less the same thickness all the way around, but on the downward strokes, identical. And this is the 16th, which is tomorrow. And there you have the date. But make sure you switch back because that marker pen is not a very useful tool. Uh, again, go with the head. I like to keep it as big as possible and then shift it around. Now you can manually shift it by dragging this little guy, and that works. That's more efficient. But I like using the tapper tool. Feel like it gives me a little bit more precise control. Gap. Is that out? Get the logo in there. Now, sometimes I'll leave the logo blank when it's a really thin section of it because if I do the triangle on this and do the circles on this, it looks a little bit weird. So I'm just going to leave that whole thing blank in this particular panel. So if anybody's ever wondered why sometimes there is the word Sue in his hat, and sometimes there is not, that's it. I do it specifically for aesthetic purposes only. I don't draw it when I think it'll distract. And it'll look confusing. All right, now here he's got the quizzical look. So we're going to do the upturned eyebrows with the hook at the end. There's a more specific term for them. I don't use it. Get the ear holes. Again, go with the slider here because it's a little bit more precise for the fine tuning. And get that little artifact out of there. Get the mask in, eyeglasses, look for the mask, bringing those holes. And I love the G pen for this type of work because of that line. That line's beautiful. And we've got some hair on little baby tiny black sections like this. I'll use the pen to cover it, but here's why that's not a good idea. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but there are sections of it that didn't fill in all the way. I'm going to do the fill tool. That covers those in. There's never any doubt. And we'll get the collar here. I can come back out a little bit. And I'm not a fan of that. That's a little bit too angular. Let's cut that shoulder out. Fix that artifact here. Whoa. Reverse side of the collar is very important because it sets the tone for his neck and shoulder. Put that old guy, shoulder wrinkle, put the arm, put the arm wrinkle. Now here's that painting that's going to go behind him, and I kind of want it to not bite the entire corner. I want to leave a little side of wall in between it and the panel so I think it'll look interesting when we get it knocked down. Uh, for flowers, I don't really do a lot of detail on the flowers. So if you've seen the flowers that I draw, you notice I'm no Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, 
I'm more of Van Gogh when it comes to flowers, and I give you the impression of the flower, not the actual flower itself. It's not that I have anything against flowers per se, it's just that they're a pain in the ass to draw. Maybe. Flowers. Now, this little guy's going to be a little trickier because I want to get the lines done first, and then I'll go in and clean them up later. I'm going to extend them into the dock a little bit. I'm using, let's see if I use a shift key, it automatically does them straight and angled. But because I'm doing everything at an off angle here, that's not what I want to use. That's great for technical drawings, but when you're drawing a room in perspective seen from a tilted angle, that particular key doesn't work, doesn't do the job. That little guy, that little guy. We're just blocking stuff in here, right? Because all these lines and excesses are gonna go over and get the door angle. And here, I'm not gonna do the baseboards as clear. They're gonna be a really thin line. It's really gonna get edited out with the coloring. So that's not that big of a deal here. Is that fruit painting as yet to be decided? Fruit painting. And here is the New York City skyline. Oh, that's right there. Okay, and then we'll do the sofa. Since I'd like to verify that I'm getting the right angles in there just by using what I've previously done, because sometimes you get into this stage in the weeds and you forget what you've done. And then there's that glitch in Clip Studio where sometimes it imagines that you're doing something that you're not doing. All right, look at that. Okay, we're good. Now let's get the square. Now here's the secret to drawing all this. You gotta know the top line and the side line and draw a square. When you get that square done, you got your circle. Now obviously I missed that one, so let's go back. Right there. And that's your circle. That's how to do it. it. It's not really very tactical and it's not really very graceful, but it gets a circle done as long as you know where that corner where they've got a meet is, is right up here. Now, because I've got the little section coming down, I don't use the circle, I use the, the line tool and I just draw a nice little gentle curve for it. Now, the fun part, we get to zoom in and clean up the mess. And here, that mess is right here. So you can take that little guy out, and you take that little guy out, take that little guy out, and we've got a clean, clean corner. Here, because we're going to nibble out that. Taking out all of the overlaps and intersections here. And at the same time, filling in any gaps. This is going to make the coloring portion of it, which we'll get into here in a bit, much, much easier. Now is the time to take these out too, because when you get the drawing done, you're not going to have time to do that. Imagine going through all these individual areas and spaces just to take out that line, that line, that line, that line, that line. It's a pain in the ass. You don't want to subject yourself to that kind of torture. Not willingly. Not unless you're willing to pay extra. Get the hair. And when we're doing small versions of the dock, you've got to keep everything small. You're going for basically a hint at everything. You're not actually drawing eyeballs, you're just drawing dots. Basic lines representing everything on here. And I could go with a smaller pen, but the fine control that the G pen gives you here in the software will let you get all of that done without having to change the tool. So I can get all the stuff done with one tool. I like that. And I get the hands in here because he's got the hands on his hip. 
It's not a very graceful hand on the hip, but for the sake of the argument, it works. And I'm leaving these holes in here, but I'm filling the gaps. You know what? I don't like that hand. That doesn't look like a normal human's hand. Let's just go with what I drew in the first place. That works a lot better. Get rid of that artifact. Get rid of that artifact. Get the corner in there and close that gap. And then that's it. That'll color up nicely. Then we'll get the pants done. And when you do the pants, you always got to remember that every time they hit the floor, there's a wrinkle. And that wrinkle always looks a little bit different depending on the angle. And the thing about Converse All Stars, very simple design. That part's red, that part's white. Go. Get that, get that, get that. Close these gaps. I'm not worried about them being completely lined up perfectly. That's not the point here. All right, now we got everything done. Right? Except these. It's always good to draw back to see what you're missing. Because you are always missing something when you think you're finished. All right, there we go. Now that's that. And before you do anything to this drawing at all, you take away the pencil line underneath. And then you go full size so you can look at every single panel individually on its own merit and notice that you're missing something every single time. Every single time, that always happens. I always miss one thing and then I end up having to go back. But I have such a good backup system in place that I very rarely miss things like that the second time. The first time, it's a crapshoot, not gonna lie. I'm not entirely the most rememberful of people. I get some chair legs in there. I'm not going for Sistine Chapel type quality here. I'm just giving a hint of the chair. It doesn't have to be an exact copy. We're not doing an Ikea catalog here. We're drawing a stupid chair that nobody's ever going to remember. And if anybody's ever noticed or paid attention to the chairs, they're a different in every single version of the docs department. I've never drawn the same chair twice. That's by design because I want to keep it random. Get a flower pot in there. There we go. And because we're doing a hint of flowers here as they get smaller, we're actually just going to go for the cloud effect. This is what I use when I'm doing background crowds too. I'll just do a outline, color that outline in a specific color, and then just put some very, very generic identifying details in there. And that is a flower pot. Last thing to do is that leg. And this is one of those octagon spider leg tables that I absolutely hate. So I figured, sure, let's give it to him. If anybody's ever tried to move a chair underneath one of these and kicked one of these legs with one of these legs, you know why I hate them. There we go. Let's take a look at that pencil free. I'm not worried about these lining up because this is all going to be the same color, but I want a kit. That one. It's going to make it look a little bit better. Full screen. Good. Now, once we've got this done, we take the pencils and dump them out. And then the next thing to do is to go into the color layer, and that's going to be this little guy right here. But we'll do that on another episode. We're not going to we're not going to get into that here. So as soon as I get all the other ones inked, we'll do another recording. We'll do the coloring and the lettering.